so good to be back at The Current. I want to play uh, a few songs for you today. One is called Dark Saturday. This is our dirt road version, so you can picture yourself in another place at another time. Somewhere in the south of France Or the Caribbean Sea She said I don't need to make a living Fake diamonds got nothing on me I met her in the world below She's a tourist of the world beneath I said everything I built from nothing She said I'm so rich Everything's free So dark it ain't so dark So dark it ain't so dark Forever and never A torch in search of a flame To be good, get better Well, I've been feeling this way Forever and never A night in search of a day As anxious as ever It's such a dark, dark, dark Saturday What's your name and where you from? Well, I'm worth your weight in gold And while we lie here in the sun The whole wide world's about to explode Now our bodies intertwine And the truth is plain to see I said everything I built from nothing She said, don't you blame your problems on me So dark, it ain't so dark So dark, it ain't so dark Forever and never A torch in search of a flame To be good, get better I change by staying the same Forever and never A night in search of a day As anxious as ever It gets so dark, dark, dark So shine a light my way Shine a light my way I'm having such a dark, dark, dark Saturday Shine a light my way It's such a dark, dark Dark, 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 dark Dark Saturday Dark, 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 dark Dark, 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 dark Saturday Dark, 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 dark Dark, 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 dark Saturday Here's a song called All Comes Crashing from our new album, Formentera like a song you can dedicate to whoever it is in your life that you would want to be with in the case of total catastrophe and a lot of us just figured out who those people are might not be who you expect but this is for those people starting over won't be easy broken divided split tomorrow from today What you know just makes it harder to think straight Starting over after it breaks Starting over when the story's got an astounding twist You better turn that page When push it comes to shove We do not fall out of love We double down, we do not fade For all I know This might be mine Last night, if that's how it goes There's 
there's no one I would rather be lying beside when it all comes crashing. Damage be damned, please say you love me just as I am. Starting over won't be easy, misunderstand that pattern, fear is forcing your hand. Knowing what you know just makes it harder to think straight. Starting over after it all breaks. When push it comes to shove, we do not fall out of love. We double down, we do not fade. For all I know, this might be my last night. If that's how it goes, there's no one I would rather be lying beside. If all we Crashing down tonight, I'd be with you, and there's no one I would rather be dying beside. When it all comes crashing, all comes crashing down. When it all comes crashing, all comes crashing down. For all I know, this might be my last night. If that's how it goes, there's no one I would rather be lying beside. If all we knew came crashing down tonight, I'd be with you. And there's no one I would rather be dying beside when it all comes crashing. Ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, when it all comes crashing. Ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, when it all comes crashing. Thanks for having us in today, guys. Really cool to see everybody again. I want to leave you with a song from our album Fantasies. This is called Twilight Galaxy. Did they tell you you should grow up when you wanted to dream? Did they warn you? Better shape up if you want to succeed. I don't know about you. Who are they talking to? They're not talking to me. I'm higher than high, lower than deep. I'm doing it wrong. Singing along, I'm higher than high, lower than deep. I'm doing it wrong. Singing along, did I ask you for attention when affection is what I need? Thinking sorrow. Was perfection? I would wallow till you told me there's no glitter in the gutter. There's no twilight galaxy. I'm higher than high, lower than deep. I'm doing it wrong. 
singing along I'm higher than high Lower than deep I'm doing it wrong I'm Jill Riley from The Currents Morning Show, and I have to say it's very awesome to be back in this studio at Minnesota Public Radio because I haven't done a live session in this room since February 2020 when Glass Animals was here, and it's been a world of Zoom connections ever since, but today is different. This is awesome, <laughs> by the way. I'm so happy that you guys are here. Um, Emily Haynes and Jimmy Shaw from Metric. Hello. Welcome back. This Thank is, you. I mean, as you know, when I walked in the door, I was just like, what? I remember this place. Similar feeling to you. I'm glad this is your first time back with us yeah. so we can feel the feels together. It is. It's great. And I mean, I think of some in-studio performances, and I remember um, must have been on the tour for Synthetica, you did a, like on the fifth floor of this building. Mm -hmm. And I just, I remember how many people, I, mean, I don't know if we were violating like a fire code thing, but <laughs> that, I mean, it was busting at the seams. It's just everybody wanted to come in and check out the session. Well, um, I think that was the last time we did a headline show in Minneapolis was on, was on Synthetica because it's possible, yeah. uh, I think we did a couple of like street fair kind of festivals. We did a bunch of like we were on, to on tour with Imagine Dragons, Smashing Pumpkins, but I don't think we've done an actual headline show here in like almost 10 years. It's been a long time. Which is well, crazy. I, Rock the Garden was pretty great. I remember that year when you guys headlined in Minneapolis and um, every now and then I'll be going through uh, the channels, which I don't have that many left because cable, but um, the local public television station was there and so they had taped your performance oh, no way. and so every now and then that'll just come up and <laughs> oh, i'll stop cool. on it and be like god that was such a that's great funny. night um so yes metric you are in town on tour mm -hmm. and we should talk about the new record formentera mm -hmm. and when i heard the name formentera i thought i'm not really sure what that is and uh thankfully my uh my kid was like what does Formentera mean? I'm like, that is a good question, son. Um, <laughs> and I had a great moment of where I could just say, I don't know, because I think it's important <laughs> to say, I don't know, and you don't know. So we looked it up. And, um, and I just wonder, I guess, 
how the location, well, no, you, you tell me, what is Formentera and how did it relate to the, to the new record? Well, so Formentera is an actual physical place. It's an island in the Mediterranean off the coast of Spain. Um, it's a picturesque, idyllic paradise. And deep into 2021, which is all I need to say for everyone to know exactly what I'm talking about. And then I can add in Canada, so you can picture the snow to your ears. <laughs> um, we're still trying to keep going, be positive, even though we haven't been able to get Josh and Jules across the border, the guys from our band. We haven't been able to play a show. We've had everything canceled and it's a really scary time. Still, we're like, we're gonna get through this. We're, we're making music. We're, we're making music for when we all come out the other side. And on a particularly bleak day, it was like, I, I remember being like, I'm losing it. Like, I'm not doing well. There was like a bit of an internal mental health situation. And we made the decision to open this book that we had, which was like one of those dream destinations books, you know, where it's like, where to go before you die? Like, we're like, let's just maybe we'll pick a place every day and picture that we're there. And so we did that that day with, and what came up was Formentera. We thought we'd do it every day, but we it never left that page. I think it's still on that page in the studio. Um, and we wrote the song that day. And then that whole kind of idea sort of developed around it of the idea of making an imaginary kind of sonic oasis, a place that you can go that is in your mind, you know, that, because the reality is the physical place is so far to reach, it might as well be imaginary. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started riffing on, you know, and kind of making a nod to it in the artwork about th with the film Brazil, um, which is kind of a similar concept where Terry Gilliam's movie where, you know, you're in this really kind of dystopian reality and the protagonist in that case has this imaginary version of himself that's this heroic person and, you know, Brazil, the font and the, and the sound of the song playing is sort of taking him off into another place in his mind. So that's kind of what we anchored the album around. Yeah, it's like just finding your happy place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's a good one. I just, looking at the pictures of it, I, I'm like, this it, place can't be real. <laughs> yeah. It can't be real. I, I mean, but it, you haven't actually been there. Have I have you? actually. You have. Yeah, and it's it, it's everything you think. It's absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. Yeah. Just give me all that shoreline. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the water, where the water looks fake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's so beautiful. Yes. <laughs> um, well, and it's it's. It's interesting to hear the description of such a paradise, and then when you hit play on the record, it's like, you know, like this 10-minute opening song. I remember like going, wow. And listening to it, it sounds like there's something really like cinematic about it, like almost like it's the opening to a movie. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if like placing that track, Doom Scroller, at the beginning, I mean, and it sounds dark, but with some lightness in it, but... Um, if that was kind of intentional to sort of like set the mood of the record. Yeah, I mean, w when we were trying to sequence the record, we we really couldn't find another spot for that song. And it, it didn't, it was going to be, it was either going to set the tone or disrupt a tone, you know? And and so we sort of opted for setting the tone. And, and once we started getting into the sequence that ended up being the record, um, it kind of ends up telling this narrative of sort of starting in a place of like a lot of anxiety and stress and, uh, turmoil and um, fear, you know, and uh, throughout the course of the record, especially by the time you get to the song form in terror, which is about halfway through, uh, you sort of witness this person, you know, Emily, the protagonist, um, sort of. Yes, I make a couple uh, of um, <laughs> You know, you witness her sort of like let go of, of that anxiety and just sort of relinquish control, which is definitely something that I think a lot of people experienced around that time was realizing that you know, we all were under the impression that we were, un, you know, we had some control over our reality and then we quickly learned that we had very little control over our reality. So, uh, and that can be a freeing thing, you know, if you're in the right state of mind. And I think that's ultimately kind of what the record is about, is about starting in a place of anxiety, realizing that you don't have control and coming to peace with relinquishing that control and finding freedom on the other side. Yeah. I'm talking with Metric, and we're talking about the new record, Formentera. Um, just talking about the opening track, uh, Doom Scroller. Now, when you were making the record, and you really talk about it in like a way of telling a story, I was just looking at a list recently of um, it was like the top 50 concept records. Mm. 
and I'm looking down the list and and I kind of wondered to myself, as somebody who, I don't make records, but I love to listen to them. Um, I mean, did you approach it in that way? I mean, you kind of talked about like telling a story, you know, do you approach your records in that way in general or with this one where you like, oh, we're really gonna like set up this sort of like storyline? I don't story think we necessarily did that, but um, I think it's quite common for us to get really deep into just sort of a vibe and energy, whatever you want to call it, and 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 not pay too much attention of of the sort of like uh, the over narrative overview. You know, we don't we don't zoom out too often um, mm. until we get really close to the end, and then we zoom out. And if we were successful in really staying in a certain vibe and tip, then it usually does have kind of a narrative, and then we can start to see what it is, and then we can kind of finish it and put it together. So it really ends up telling that narrative. Yeah, it's more mm -hmm. of a reveal than right. which I love that process. Yeah, it's, it's actually. it reveals itself to us. Which um, is which so is it's cool. such a weird feeling, where because also it's we're you know super democratic in this kind of consensus of like if someone doesn't love a song, it's not going on there. Like there's never there's that's just not going to mm. happen. Mm. So you kind of don't you can have your ideas, but there's really no point in getting like pig headed about anything because. We all just kind of, it feels like we're all looking at this thing we made and being mm -hmm. like, oh, weird. And then in the case of Formentera, everyone had this sort of like psychic consensus moment of like being, including like the artwork guys, like, oh my God, that's got to be the title track. And that's the thing. And we all realized that that was the middle, but only like we hadn't, we'd, we'd finished it and hadn't really circled back on it in months. And then when we were doing that zoom out that Jimmy described, it was like, oh. Look at that. So, yeah, that so, I mean, that's spooky how that kind of yeah, happens. Cool. Yeah. So what was the number one yeah. concept album? Number one, uh, Kendrick Lamar. Cool. Something Mad, Mad City. Well, I can't remember the title of it. I can't remember the full title of it. I remember number 50 being Styx Kilroy was here. All right. And then there were some, you know. No Pink Floyd in there? There was Pink Floyd. There were some that. of the old, the old the, classics right. in the rock sure. operas, but yeah. Um, but yeah, there were there were certainly more I mean, we, like contemporary. We choices. definitely said at some point in this. I definitely said it was like I'm not gonna try and make Dark Side of the Moon again, and then totally did. Oops. That's all we've ever been doing this entire time. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Well, and I think, uh, well, for your band to be on the same page about something, it seems like a record of this time that we're living in, like, how could you not be on the same page? Like, because no matter what anybody's point of view is or opinion or experience, like, we all just went through a big thing together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's really no denying that mm -hmm. part. It'd be weird to go back in time 10 years and ask somebody, have you ever heard the expression doom scroller? Yeah. And what do you think have it you ever is? Heard shelter in place. Right. <laughs> because I have to tell you about the future. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think that that kind of, you know, when you talk about this place, you know, form and Terra and the name of the record and, you know, kind of it being your ideal sort of like happy place and the place that calms you. And then to think of the concept of like, doom scrolling, which I guess I've done a little bit where I get myself really wound up, like I'm seeking out something. I don't even know if I'm actively seeking out bad news, but I won't stop. Mm -hmm. Like again, and it's always something and it's still, it's and now I have to see what everybody has to say about this and you know, fact and opinion, like that starts to blur, yeah. blur and melt together. Uh -huh. um, and I wondered, like, did you find yourselves getting into that state oh my of God. mind? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like it, sure. it was yeah. really problematic for me. Like I. You're trying to make sense of everything. You're trying to be a good citizen, be a good person, yeah. educate yourself, know what's going on, and care about what's happening to other people because you're not a sociopath. But then when you realize, like I had, at one point my hand was like kind of a claw. <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> what's happening? Like I'm. that's the extent that I'm just trying to put the pieces together and and feeling it like, you know, physically your body responds to these things, the stress level, the, the cortisol or whatever the hell it is, you know, mm -hmm. of being like, what do I do about, I mean, that list of, you know, lining up the numbers under the names. It's like, it's not just the pandemic, it's so many things. And it's, you can really, as you, it sounds like you've experienced too, you can really get yourself in a knot where it's like, you feel like you're doing the right thing as a member of society, right. but you're actually completely dysfunctional because, you know, and then you just put the thing down and it's like dark. <laughs> it's like, 
you know, no windows open. You're just like cowering there. What are you going to do with that information? What you have no empowerment, especially when we were locked down, to do anything. So, yeah, I hope that um, even just naming it and sort of describing it is helping maybe some people be like, yeah, damn. That's what I was I doing. Did that too. Yeah, yeah. I did that too. Yeah. Um, you know, when it comes to the the song All Comes Crashing, it's almost like, you know, you get to that point, and I don't know if you guys went through this, but at a certain point when a lot of the things that I enjoyed doing or the people that I would see, or even just like coming and doing my job every day and and kind of like um, now that we're like in the year 2022, um, I kind of figured out what priorities were a little bit more. Um, and I wish that it wouldn't have been something so big to get me to figure that out. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing more that I want to do than like I'm waiting for my kid to get off the bus. Like mm -hmm. I just, I'm like, oh yeah, like <laughs> this is what it's about. Sure. It wasn't about all that other stuff. Yeah. And uh, and I, I, th I mean, it's, there's something very dark about like thinking, you know, like I want to just be sitting like, you know, I, I don't know, somewhere like next to a lake where there are no people around and just like chilling with him and my family and, mm -hmm. you know, what, you know, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. Like that's who I want to be with. I mean, at the I, end. I think is it, I don't think yeah. that's dark. And that's I'm glad you're getting the, the vibe of the song because yeah. it really is that where you're like, oh, wow. Well, if it happened when it happened when it happens, you look to your, who's beside you and you're like, right on, you know? Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's, that's who I want to be with, you know? So. And maybe it doesn't have to be a big fireball <laughs> yeah, coming exactly, out of the sky, but exactly. just like no, any just kind of when, change. Yeah. Maybe. When things are yeah. hard. Yeah. And it, it ends, it, I'm glad you got the vibe that it's actually like a super positive kind of very romantic, maybe not in the conventional romantic sense, but mm -hmm. romantic of like, this is the point of life. I've always thought Armageddon would be slow and lame. I think it's, you, you might be right. <sighs> I just wanted to be just quick. Like, Slow let's just do like this. <laughs> Slow my get in. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking with Emily Haynes and Jimmy Shaw from Metric. Um, how, what does it feel like to be back on the road? How was oh, the tour? Oh, so good. The, the tour's been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, crowds are so great. It's like everything's selling out. It's just been really good. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, blast. Coming back to Minneapolis and St. Paul. We're in St. Paul right now. Mm -hmm. And I live in St. Paul, so I'm, I always want to make sure and say St. Paul. Mm -hmm. But um, when you know you're going to be coming back here, which I just, I feel like Minnesota is kind of like Canada junior. Like we're a little <laughs> we're extension. We're we're, I think we're friends. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're pretty sure. friendly. Um, what do you look forward to when you come back around here? Honestly, it's coming here. because We've been doing yeah. this at every stage yeah. and in so many different settings and the, like, externally, the state of the world, I feel like I've come into this room. It's like a little time capsule. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Yeah. It's awesome to have you guys back. Um, hey, before uh, before we wrap up our, our conversation, um, who just told the midday host and music director, Jade, on our station, she was talking about um, a new documentary called This is Sparkle Horse. Oh, wow. And she mentioned your name yeah. as being a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I haven't seen the trailer yet, but I, I heard her mention your name that you were part of it. So I just wanted to ask you about um, like being asked to be a part of that. Yeah, I mean, that was a long time ago. It, it's only coming out now. Yeah. So um, the reason I have a connection to Sparkle Horse is that on my first solo album, Knives Don't Have Your Back, I put together this little band called The Soft Skeleton and the drummer is Scott Miner, who is the drummer in Sparkle Horse. Okay, okay. And so he contributed in that sort of signature sound that I think a lot of us who are fans of Sparkle Horse associate with it, that kind of sludgy, slow drum thing. That's Scott's beautiful signature. So you hear that in moments on um, Nice Don't Have Your Back. He also played on the follow-up album, Choir of the Mind. Um, he played on Legend of the Wild Horse. But uh, that interview, weirdly, we're talking about the K West Hotel in London, but I think that's, oh no, what's the other hotel in London that had the, it's that kind of hotel that has like the chair that's like a hand. You know oh, what I mean? Uh, like the it's- Sanderson. Yes. Um, so they, it's like one of those hotels that's like, we're quirky. It's like, okay, <laughs> you're just tired. It's like, stop with like the disco ball, like tennis racket, like what? Like doesn't, no. But there was a room there that was like filled with kitsch that we filmed my um, interview segment. But that that's easily 10 years ago. Wow. So it took a minute. 
Apparently. I guess so. I wonder what I was wearing. Well, you're about to find <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it, it was like, if it's not already streaming somewhere, it was going to be very soon. So oh, I, great. Uh, I'm glad that's coming out. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I guess Sparkle Horse, I remember I starting college radio in 02 or 03, and the first, I think one of the first interactions I had with the music director, which his voice did not sound like this, but this is how I remember him. She'd be like, you guys, someone took the entire Sparkle Horse discography, and I don't know where it is. And, <laughs> and I had no idea. Like, I'm like, oh, Sparkle Horse. And I'm like, well, if somebody stole all of them, it must be, be like good. awesome. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then like coming here and, and playing that, and then, um, you know, you know when Mark Linkus passing away, and that yeah. was, yeah, that was. Those uh, are great records. Yeah, yeah. Really, good. really influential. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, it's there. That's Can't great. wait to see what Can't you were wait wearing. To see what I was wearing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Emily Haynes, Jimmy Shaw from Metric. Thank you for coming in to The Current, and goodbye. It's always a pleasure. Thanks.